Joe, and I'm the Accidental Brewer. Uh, and this is my daughter, Hasella. Say hi. hi. All right, yeah, there we go. Uh, and what we're doing today is we're doing the beginning of a coffee mill. And so uh, we're just going to kind of walk you through the process of what we're doing. Now, I've already made this once before, but I made it with a slightly different coffee, and I added a little bit more coffee to the cold brew that I made. But that's, how, that's the method that we're going to use today. So this is a cold brew coffee maker, and it makes cold brew concentrate. Um, and so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, Starbucks French roast. Um, this is not something that I necessarily love. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. It may be terrible, but we're going to find out. We're going to make a gallon of uh, this brew. So we have to let this set for uh, about 24 hours, eh, you know, 16 to 24 hours. And uh, what I'm going to do is I've got my scale over here. Oh, it's got me two grams again. Why does it keep going back to two grams? I don't know. There we go for grams. And there is my hole. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 75 grams in this. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, so this is all live on here. But we're going to go to 75 grams. 75 grams. Um, well, that's a little bit much. And so you may say, but you haven't sanitized this yet. You are correct. I haven't sanitized it yet. I'm going to sanitize the liquid after I make the coffee. So I'm just putting it together, uh, and then I'll, I'll put some Camden tablets in the uh, concoction before we uh, do everything, because I don't know that this is completely sanitary here, and everything that this is being put in. But I'll put about 76 grams in here. I'm going to take one gram out. Oh, that's a little bit too much. How much? Give me 75. 75 is what we're going for. I put 100 in the other one, I want to go down by a quarter. 76. All right, 76 it is. 76 grams. Right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to roughly grind the coffee to be able to create the, um, the cold brew. And then we'll put it in the fridge. But I might have to do this in multiple batches. And I may also have to get something to help me pour this in because it's a little bit more than um, what my grinder can do. So we're going to fast forward at this point. And this is when you won't hear, but you'll see what we're doing. <laughs> So what we have a situation is here where this is dry and that is wet. And last time what happened is all this floated up to the top and that's terrible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to pour it back in here because it's the same water that we got from our filter that I'm going to use for the coffee. And then I am going to take the top. Put this in, um, well, junk, put this back on. It's a, it's a special sort of thing, but I need to be able to put the top on right after that. So again, this is dry and this is wet and I want to make sure that this floats down to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in here and I'm just going to pour a little bit of water through this and let it go back into the container and you can see it's already starting to turn but that will keep it from floating up to the top um, and hopefully keep us from having issues with that later and as you can see this is going to be about two liters uh, this is about where it has to be filled up to so we'll tomorrow or the next day we'll have this and then I'll drop some Camden in this um, and we'll start back up day two all right, so we're back. And what we're gonna do is... is not scratch our head. So I'm gonna sanitize my hand again. Um, 
dumb me. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the coffee that we made yesterday, uh, along with some of the honey, we're going to mix it up, and then we're going to add some spices. So basically this recipe is two and a half pounds roughly of honey. I'm using uh, two wildflower honeys. I know you're not really supposed to necessarily mix honey, uh, but this isn't necessarily for the flavor. I just, the, well, this does give a nice flavor. I'm doing this because I ran out of honey of one type. Um, I normally just use this Happy Belly brand or um, some uh, Florida Sweet Squeeze um, honey. But that said, I've sanitized everything here. I've gotten it ready. Now I just need to put the different things inside. So here we go. Um, let me stand up my hydrometer or my hydrometer as some people would call it and get this thing ready to pour in. And I'm not going to pour this whole thing in, just most of it. Now I did use um, some Starbucks coffee for this. It's uh, French, French roast. I don't necessarily love French roast coffee, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll see how I feel about it after it's fermented. It may not be my favorite. I am going to try to avoid getting a lot of the uh, um, extra coffee grounds that are in there. There's always a little bit in a, um, a cold brew that's kind of left over. Not my favorite. But as you can hear, all the tinkling going down inside. There we go. So that's our cold brew. It's about half of it. And now we're going to put our honey in. The most amazing part. Let that sit there. And something else that I've done, I have made the, um, the water to be a little bit warmer than normal because this is cold. So uh, when I add water to this, it will um, it'll heat it up a bit, make it a little easier to get the honey out. It'll also get the honey out of the spout and it'll warm up the cold, cold brew. Normally I wouldn't use warm water for my brew, but that's just the way it ended up today because it was cold. And I forgot to take it out of the fridge this morning and let it rest for a while which again, bad idea. So I'm thinking about doing an apple cider, um, yeah, sizer next. Uh, there, there's a lot of people that have done before. I've got, it's, mine's more like an apple wine um, and that, that works with the, um, the honey to make a honeyed wine, apple cider, sizer mix. Um, which I like, um, made it quite a few times and I've, I've enjoyed it every time. Uh, but uh, I'm thinking about doing it. Give some feedback in the comments if you think that's a good idea. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna put the honey in here and let it go. So this was two pounds and this was about five ounces uh, of honey, which ends up being it's oh, three ounces less than half a pound. Um, so you can do with it what you will. <laughs> you can make this with two and a half pounds of honey. Um, but I don't think that that was, uh, or it wasn't really necessary for me to do that. So but we're going to let this honey drain in and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> So again, back to the whole, it makes it easier to pour the honey down if you have a little bit of warm water. As you can see right here, I just got all that honey out, or most of it out. There's still a little bit left in the bottom. Um, I'll try to get that here real quick. But take the water, shake it up. Um, also introduces oxygen in to shake it up, so it's a good idea. 
Honey needs, or honey, <laughs> yeast need oxygen in order to be able to do their thing. Uh, specifically, I believe it's to create cell walls. Um, I have not actually looked that up since the last time I said that. I heard that on Flora Brewing, and I'm pretty sure she's right. Normally she doesn't say things unless she knows, so. Um, but, you know, we all have our blind spots, so definitely not going to. You know, she's an expert in what she does. I don't know that she's necessary. I don't know what she does for a, a day job, so maybe, maybe she knows. All right. There is a little bit of honey left in here, but there is such a strong flavor smell of uh, coffee. Might be able to get some more of that out when I pour the rest of the water in. Uh, just had a had a thing happen. Got a little bit on the outside. Don't want that. So let's mix this up. Make sure it's it's mixed up really good, nice and aerated. Um, and kind of go from there. Let, let me tell you the joys of these little black caps. They're perfect for carboys, and a lot of carboys, especially the type that I get, they come with threads on them. So my brew shop just sells these, and um, I love them. It saves my thumb, keeps me from having to do all sorts of crazy stuff to, <laughs> to uh, try to mix in my honey, uh, and you know, it's nice to get everything shook up. And I don't spray it everywhere. When I take it off, it just it ends up being good. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can get the rest of this honey to drain down in and uh, put a little bit more stuff in. Now I am putting, and I learned not to do it through this funnel, but I am gonna put um, about, I don't know, maybe 30 raisins that I have down in here, four allspice berries, and a cinnamon stick. I was thinking about getting some cloves. Actually, actually. So in here, I have some raisins, a little bit of rum, and there are like 30 raisins in here. Uh, a whole stick of cinnamon, um, two cardamom pods, uh, pods, two cardamom pods, two cloves, and some allspice berries. Now this is kind of a, mix that I use. Sometimes I put nutmeg in it also. Um, I like this in a, as like a spice to my uh, wines, but I think it also adds a little bit of a nutrient to it. I'm not sure. The wines that I put this in tend to do a little bit better, especially when I put them in primary. So I'm going to try this again today because as you saw in the previous video, the, um, the, the Fruit Punch Me V2 is just kind of going at it. It is, it is having a good time. So I'm going to go ahead and drop these down in. I'm going to try to get a little bit more of the uh, honey out by pouring some water in and adding some aeration. We got a lot of foam this time, which doesn't make me super happy, but that is the way it is. Um, but I got most of the, of the honey out, which is great. So unfortunately, I haven't found a better way to get these in than just to kind of drop them in. So that's what I'm going to do. Take them out, drop them in. Now, I normally just kind of dump the last of it with some rum in. Um, but last time, that gave me a little bit of a weird reading. So I'm just going to put these in by hand, not worry about the, well, the rum's got some of the, yeah, I just, I'm not going to worry about it. Just put these in and then uh, shake it up a little bit more get them down inside. Now, the next thing that I want to do is get a reading to see how much alcohol I might expect there to be. I don't know. I mean, I really don't, I don't care so much how much the ABV is, whether it's, you know, 15 or 18 or whatever. Sometimes I go, wow, whenever I look at whatever I, I put in here. Uh, but more or less, it is because 
I want to make sure I know when it's done. Um, you know, how far has it gone? You know, when it gets to 1.0. I suppose I could just take a reading as I watch it. I don't have to take one to begin with, but also kind of I do want to know a little bit about how much um, A, B, B it is. So I just keep, I, I like to keep records. I'm, I'm not, but I'm not as concerned with it being a high alcohol. Uh, I just want it to taste good, essentially. Now, everything here has been sanitized, so I am not worried about, you know, cross-contamination. Everything that's up here is sanitized. There is yeast floating in the air, so um, that could be a problem. But, all right, so this is at 1.08. That's pretty respectable. Um, I don't remember what my other coffee mail was. I'll probably put it down right here. Uh, but this is at 1.08. That means that um, I think it'll be somewhere around uh, 10.2%, I think. Yeah, I think, I think it's like 10, 11% ABV what it'll end up being in the end. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my yeast holes in, and then I'll use this liquid to kind of um, wash them down, since this is a already wet funnel, and I'm gonna add my yeast in. And as you can see, I've already got one of these airlocks prepared, uh, and my rubber band is ready. Rubber band is ready, the rubber band. The rubber band band. Now I did, I've sanitized everything, like I've said before. Uh, of course, I didn't sanitize the yeast holes in the package or the, the yeast itself, but I did everything else. So I'm gonna put like one and a half teaspoons of this in here. About like that, about that much. About that much. Now to put my yeast in. This is the same EC118 package that I used for the other <laughs> the other day, so I just decided I'd use it here. But also, I was uh, this I may back sweeten this, and so this may become. A higher gravity need I'm not 100% sure uh, and because of that I just kind of want to make sure that I'm doing this right. All right so the foam is wanting to come up into the spigot Again, sanitized towel. All right, so one last time, I'm gonna shake things up just to make sure stuff gets down around inside. And mix thoroughly within. You know, now that I think about that, maybe I should take another reading on this just to make sure that I didn't, because um, I didn't really mix the water in super well. And I also just made a huge mess around the outside of this. Let me try, let me try that reading one more time. And I really don't care if there's a lot of uh, oxygen getting introduced now. I'm just more trying to help the yeast colony build its walls. Um, hopefully you can't hear the furious typing in the background. I'm off work today, so I'm doing this for fun. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my wife's in the other room working.
feeling I was pretty close to the right. I just want to make sure. Okay, so I, I'm right. I didn't mix it up very well because it went up a whole 10 points. It's at 1.09. Yeah. Um, so I need to remember that, 1.09. And we'll pour this back in just using my trusty funnel to help me do that. All right, and let's put the stopper on. You want to put the, time to put the stopper in? As so. This is our airlock. Uh, just put some sanitizer liquid in, and, and I put a rubber band on just because I'm, I'm a little paranoid, and I'm worried that the airlock will shoot out if it gets to be a super active fermentation. Otherwise, that's been it. Thanks for watching. This has been the Accidental Brewer, and so... I'm the Accidental Brewer, and this has been our coffee mail video. We have a Patreon and a Twitter and an Instagram. If you'd like to uh, buy me a coffee or <laughs> coffee, uh, or if you'd like to, you know, kind of help fund the channel, please visit our Patreon page, see what, what sort of perks we have there. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.